peace of heart, and peace of soul. Plant four rows of squash. Squash gossip, squash indifference, squash grumbling, and squash selfishness. Plant four rows of lettuce. Let us be faithful, let us be kind, let us be patient, let us really love one another. No garden is complete without turnips. How many love turnips? I love turnips. Turnip for meetings, turnip for service, and turnip to help one another. Amen. To conclude our garden, we must have time. Time for each other, time for family, mm -hmm. and time for friends. Water freely with patience and cultivate with love. There is much fruit in your garden because you reap what you sow. Yes. Amen. True. Amen. I thought that was um, really nice. I've seen it before, and um, I love the turn up one. You know, turn up for meeting, turn up for service. So we got to plant those. There should be eight rows of those. <laughs> now, how many um, did your uh, spiritual work? <coughs> Hello? Yeah. Oh, we got them over here. Yeah. Spiritual yeah. gifts. Spiritual gifts, huh? Oh, I survey. The spiritual gifts are <coughs> Just uh, you fill it out with the number. It's all about you. <laughs> Okay, these are the scripture gifts. Yeah, but he'll tell you, and then um, you, whatever you feel that you're strong, you know, you put down a number, like five is your strongest, and one is your. Yeah, don't let that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, they'll have the, the different spiritual gifts, and you put in the numbers, they'll tell you to go back and put in whatever number you had there, and you add it up all inside the count. You know what? Don't worry about the chart. The chart gets people all panicky and sweating and everything. That's only for fun. I guess people don't think that's so fun. So, <laughs> so uh, but anyways, uh, because you, you know, when you know your spiritual gift, um, you guys got one, right? You all got one. All right. When you know your spiritual gift and you can use it in the service of the Lord, yeah. that means your strong points. That means your strong yeah. gifts, and you use it to serve the Lord. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so please fill those out and. Uh, let me know your spiritual gifts, and then we'll use them. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Huh? Yeah, yeah, she's my wife. Yeah. She got my office back. In my office later. All right, turn to um, Romans 13. We got out of chapter 12. Let's get around the clock. Starting on 13. Now last week we talked about the end of 12. Uh, we love our enemies. Mm -hmm. We love our enemies. And we covered verses 14, 17, 19, 20, 20, 21. It's love your enemies for that point. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And we said that bless means to speak highly of. To speak good about somebody. Don't curse them. Don't, you know, put them down. Um... <laughs> Matthew 5, 43 and 48 says, Ye have heard that it has said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully you, use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth Rain on the just and the unjust. The evil on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For ye, for if ye love them which love you, that what reward have you? Do not even the publicans do the same. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And Jesus, you know, Jesus broke down a lot of barrier walls. He broke down the barrier on racism. You know, because the Jews hated the Samaritans. 
Oh, they hated them so much because Samaritans were, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, brain went dead. Hold on a minute. Um, there, 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 were, there were Gentiles and there were Jews. Uh, they were um, intermixed, if you want to put it that way. Um, anyways, they did not like them. They even circled around Samaria just so they wouldn't even associate with them. He broke down that one. Uh, he broke down uh, the, the walls with women. I mean, a, a, a Jew was not even supposed to talk to a woman in public that was not his wife. Yes. And he broke down, though, he broke down so many, and here he is saying, you love your enemies. Love them. And bless them. Curse them not. And, uh, and then in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, Paul states, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clam uh, clamor and evil speaking would have put, be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You know, we need to forgive as Christ forgives us. You know, we mess up all the time, don't we? You know, and, 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 and a lot of times we have to have uh, uh, help with that, too. We just bring it to the Lord. Uh, and He will help us. The next point we had um, last week was love to rejoice with them and weep with them. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. To rejoice seems easy. You know, but what about, remember we talked about, what about a friend got a new Jaguar? You know, and uh, and they're all happy and everything, but inside, and you smile at them and everything, but inside you are what? Jealous with envy. Right? Your heart is hardened because you're, you want what they got. And so we need to rejoice with them and be happy with them and, and put away the jealousy and put away the, um, the wrath and, and stuff like that and, and really rejoice with them. Not to be resentful, but to have a resentful heart. Greed. And greed. You know, covetousness. You know, covetousness. Where was uh, Dakota and I? Um, oh, yes. Dakota and I, we went over, we were looking over at uh, Best Buy and um, uh, Walmart for our TV over for the Science Fellowship Hall. Yeah. And, Paul. and uh, we were in Best Buy and everything, and we got what I needed. I said, come on, Dakota, we got to get out of here because I I'm, I'm sinning, I'm coveting here. Let's go. <laughs> Let's move out. And uh, he was sitting over there in the, in the game section, of course. What help was he? But, um,. <clears throat> Well, I said we gotta get out of here because you know, you know, because we both love electronics and stuff like that. So uh, we had to, I had to get out of there. And uh, he said, "Oh, let's get this." And I said, "If I got that, your mother would kill me." <laughs> um, but then it said, "Weep with them that weep." And remember, Jesus wept. Uh, the shortest verse in the Bible, John 11:35. You know, Jesus wept. You know, after, you know, Lazarus' grave. You know, really wasn't for Lazarus because Lazarus was coming. You know, well, he was probably weeping because they had to bring him back. You know, but he was weeping for Jerusalem because of their unbelief. And he had to, you know, bring him back where they could believe who he was. God is a compassionate God. Lamentation in uh, 3.22. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fell upon. One of the most touching, profound testimonies to God's heart of tender sympathy toward his children who weep is found in um, Psalm 56, 8. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into the Bible, are they not in thy book? You see the compassion, the love of God, he even counts our tears that fall. And um, and then we talked, uh, the last point we had last week was a love to live peaceably with everybody. And uh, we, we, we love, we need to be peacemakers. Um, and not of Smith and Wesson, but peacemakers, you know, to bring peace among discord, um, to bring peace. Uh, and, you know, if it, um, if it is possible, the believer is to live peace with all men. Um, and, and, and a lot of times, sometimes it's, it, it's hard to do because some people just right at you and, you know, and you just have to walk away and pray for them. Because uh, people want, so how many people know people that just love to fight? They just, I mean, you say it's daylight, they'll say it's night. And they're the total opposite. And if you say one thing, they're, you know for a fact they're going to say the opposite. And it doesn't matter what you say. 
You know, if you say M&Ms are sweet, they're going to say no, M&Ms are bitter. It doesn't matter what you say. How many people know people like that? You know, we all have somebody that just, you know, and you just have to kind of what? Go away. <laughs> Move out, you know, uh, you know, smartly. And so, um, in Hebrews 12, 14, says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And um, we need to live peaceably with people. And not to be the rollers and the fighters, but to, to show the love of Christ, to, to be the light in a dark world. We are His light. You know, we are the reflectors. And um, we need to show, show that. Um, because the church is called out, you know. And that's what we're going to talk about today. In 13, 1 through 7, um, submit to authority. I know some of you aren't going to like this, especially the, the younger generation. But we're going to talk about submitting to authority, especially civil yes. authority. Yes. You know, a civil authority. And um, in, in the first point I got, yeah, well, wait a minute, I jumped the thing here. Hold on, let me back up here. How many of us complain or uh, complain when a police officer gives us a ticket? Right? How many will go to court and try to fight your way out of it? Even though that you know <laughs> you were wrong. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, and and uh, even how many of you do those court California stops? You know what I'm talking about. You come up to a stop sign and you're still rolling. You look both ways and oh, nobody's there. And you yes. I did that the other day, and a police officer went right on by me, and I said, Oh, Lord, I hope he was looking the other way. <laughs> but I mean, it was coming. I mean, I'm, but I knew I did wrong, so if he didn't pull me over, I couldn't say, I didn't do it. I said, I'm sorry, officer. No way it was coming. I just figured I'd just yeah. go. <laughs> but, um, but we, 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 and, um, how about, what is coming up in, a, in another uh, month? Well, Easter, yay! Yeah. What else is coming up with it? Taxes! Everybody, how many of you like loves to wait till the last minute? Because they know they probably have to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they wait, you know. We, Diane does ours so early. I mean, she doesn't like ours right after Christmas. Yeah. But, um, but of course, you can't get anything until after February, so doesn't really matter, but anywho, um, and, but how many times we, uh, how many of us grumble and complain about taxes? We complain too hard. We complain that we're taking them out. We complain about everything, okay? How many of us complain um, or dog the president, the senate, the congress, the government, the delegates, etc., etc., even call them names? Like, uh, idiot! Or other choice words. How many of us have done that? How many of us? Come on now, be honest, you're in church! Do you see my hand up? You know? And uh, even when President Obama was in the office and stuff, I, I just said that the reason God appointed him there because he wanted us to be in the wilderness. <laughs> Because of our sin. You know? <laughs> so, but Paul is writing to the church in Rome. Now you got a picture of this. In Rome. Where the Romans are. And you know how the government of Rome was back in those days. There was a lot of unhappy campers. Yeah. The way the Romans especially treated the Christians. Yeah. And what did the, I mean, they, they would kill them, they would execute them, they would throw them in the, uh, the arena to make a sport out of it where the lions would chase the Christians around. And when they were getting tore up, they were cheering them on, cheering them on. That is because of the sinful nature, by the way. You know, we, how many of us love to watch gory movies? I mean, you know, war movies or anything like that. The more blowing up, the more the better. You know, it's guys, you know. We, <laughs> Right? You know, and then we got to sit with our wives and watch some of these love, love movies, you know. And we sit there, 
like I am, been trying to get me, and I keep on telling her I can't do it. I tried it again, and I fell asleep. Gone with the wind. <laughs> I mean, that is a nodder, I'm telling you. I mean, it's, it's like you're in the land of nod. You me? I'm awake here. I mean, the book about Civil War, let's get some booming and banging. Let's get something going. But um, I've tried, though, to watch. She loves that movie. It's such a, it's a love movie. It's a, I just, I don't know, I just can't get into it. But anyway, but you know what? We have, what do we have? We have dual citizenship. Did you know that? Yes. We are citizens of heaven because we are Christians. And we are citizens of this earth because this is where we live. Right. All right, we have dual citizenship, and um, so let's see what Paul has to say about the Christian and civil government. So let's take a look at thirteen one through seven in Romans. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinances of God, and they that resist shall have, shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore he must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For there is cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And the first point I have is powers that are, or that be, are ordained by God. God uh, created the government. God created civil authority. You know, and, and so, so it says, let every soul be subject unto higher powers, in verse 1. Soul, pisuke, the breath of life. The vital force which animates the body and shows itself in breathing. Every soul is to be subject to this authority. We have the different uh, authorities. Um, and then the, the next point is, is, is subject. What does it mean to subject? Who does they To arrange under, to sub, sub, subordinate to subject, but in subjection to subjection oneself. Obey. Obey the authority. That's what Paul is saying here. Obey the authority. It, it's like with the subject, it's like a soldier absolutely obedient to his superior officer. Right? Now, how many times, I know we got two army guys right here, folks right there, I should say guys, uh, people, I'm from New York, we say everybody's guy. Uh, <laughs> but two army, and uh, you have subordinates, I mean, you have higher officers, higher sergeants, right? Everything they say, you always agree with. <laughs> She's adding me. <laughs> I said for two guys, no, we say, you got to be kidding, you really want to take this hill? I mean, how many times in Vietnam, I mean, lieutenants come in and they will not listen to the sergeants that have been there, two or three tours. And they still want, because they went to school, they know everything. And how many times they get people killed? Because they would not listen to somebody that had the experience. You know, and that's what makes a good officer, is to be a teacher. To be a teacher. But anyway, uh, that's what it means to be subject to. Because if you disobey an order from your sergeant, that could cost you, couldn't it? It could cost you a strike. You know, it could cost you uh, a lot more. Put in the brig. Sent to Fort Leavenworth, where you make um, uh, uh, little rocks out of big rocks. Or, I mean, big rocks into little rocks. You know, breaking them all the time. You know, hard labor. Um, 
But that's what it means to be subject. Everyone is subject to higher powers. Scripture makes one exception to this command. When obedience to civil authority would require disobedience to God's word. When, 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 when the civil authorities go against God's word, you know, just like with Paul, you know, um, well, we'll get to that part in a minute. Um, but, you know, in Exodus 1.17, it says, but remember in, um, um, when um, Pharaoh put the command out to kill all the male babies? That's when they put Moses in the little, in the Nile, in the basket in the Nile. And uh, the midwives had refused to obey Pharaoh's commands. They were not going to kill these, these children. In Acts 4.19, But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. Remember when he healed the lame man. And these Pharisees and Sadducees came over and everything and made a big big stink about it and everything. And the magistrate came and everything. And they told him not to speak in Jesus' name because he preached the sermon too. And not to speak in Jesus' name. And they said that, um, you know, we need to obey God more than man. You know, God told them to do it. And so where it is, um, when obedience to civil authority would require disobedience to God's word, you know, like abortion. Right? That's against God's word, isn't it? Homosexuality. That's against God's word, isn't it? And so, um, just like if somebody wanted to come in here and two homosexuals want to get married and everything, I will refuse, and then I might end up in jail. You know, and civil authorities will come and arrest me. I'm not going to fight it. I'll just go peacefully, as long as I take my word with me and my books. I have my cell full of books. <laughs> but I will be put in jail because I am going to go according to God's word, not what man says. And, be. and so, um, <clears throat> God is to be obeyed before men. The highest authority must always be obeyed. This is the very basis for men and their laws. Who is the highest, highest, highest authority? God is, right? He's the one who ordained it. That's what it says in, 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 in one. God alone is sovereign. He rules the universe. Now Satan goes around, you know, but his time is limited. You know, he might be the, the prince of the air right now. Notice what it says, prince. He's no king. He might be a prince of the air right now, you know, and causes havoc and everything like that, but his time is coming. And he knows how fast he's going around now, and look at what's happening all around the world. You know, ISIS and blowing up things and, 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 and school shootings. Right, we just had another one in Florida, right? Wasn't there another one somewhere else? Another state, not too long ago. You know, and then Satan was running amok. His time is short. I mean, and then of course the government is saying, well, guns is the issue. It's not guns aren't the issue. People, sin is the issue. Um, Psalm 62, uh, 11 says, God has spoken once, twice. I have heard this. That power belongs to God. God alone. 1 Timothy 6.15 Which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the highest of lords. <laughs> and but God has instituted four institutions here on this earth. How many know that? All right, I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right. Parents, parents have the authority over the children. Parents have the authority over the children. Government over all the citizens, the church over all the believers, and the masters over all the employers. Or your, your employers, you know, your, your, the bosses. You know, if you don't do what your boss says, what's he going to do? Fired. You know, you're fired. And so, and parents are to, or uh, the children need to listen to your parents. Because they have the authority over you. You know, they want to teach you right from wrong. They love you. And there's rules. Rules aren't there to constrict us. I mean, to, to hurt us. Rules are there to protect us. You know, I mean, like when Dakota was little, that, that, that light pole, he couldn't go past that light pole. 
Let me tell you, I had an eye on him. And he couldn't go past that pole right there. But now as he gets bigger, now it's the cross. You know? <laughs> and, uh, but you know, he's he's learned those boundaries. Now he's tried to, to, to extend those boundaries, but um, the, those were the rules. But why did I put those rules there? To protect him. I didn't want him out on 29 to get run over. You know, I mean, I, I, I worry about myself going down there. He's just getting the, getting the mail. Those tractor trailers come by, I'm afraid I'm going to be a hood ornament. Because you ever get sucked, you, you feel that wind come there, and you, and you feel, I mean, I'm glad I got a little bit of weight there to hold me down. I got myself an anchor. But I mean, if you got somebody bitty up there, you know, and then those tractor trailers come by, I mean, you feel the pressure. You know, and, and especially, you know, word you're going out there and tripping and falling, and, you know, and, you know, because 29 is, is dangerous. But uh, 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10 says, But ye are chosen generation, whoop, I jumped some, I'm sorry, let me back up. The powers that, um, that be are ordained by God. His institution to human government to reward the good and to strain the sin in the evil and fallen world. Um, and, and we go, uh, uh, let's take a look at Daniel 4, 28-33. Real quick. And we can uh, show you to the prime example that God's in control. He, he's the one that puts in kings. He's the one that puts in presidents. He's the one that puts in um, you know, all the higher ones. You know, we might vote, but God chooses who he wants in there. Daniel 4, 28. Starting at 28, uh, 4, 28 through 33, and it says, All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, and the end of the twelve months he walked into the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, to me. There fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from the men, and they dwell, dwelling shall be with the beasts of the fields. They shall make there to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over, the, over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men to eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, until his hair were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird claws. At the end of the days, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him, that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Nebuchadnezzar says, I built the kingdom. It's my majesty. And what did God say? I'm the one that put you there. And, I, and now your kingdom has been taken away from you because of your pride. And he ate grass like a, a wolf or a, an animal, not a wolf, but an animal, a beast. And had claws and everything because but of his disobedience to God. Um, <clears throat> Wherever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. So if you resist the government, you resist God. If you're disobedient to the law, you're disobedient to God. If you're disobedient or resist your parents, you are disobedient and resentful to God. Um, <clears throat> that they resist shall to themselves damnation. You know, evil will fall upon you. Paul and Silas did not resist being arrested because they knew who sat on the throne. Remember when they were arrested and put in jail? What did they do? I mean, they were beaten and put in jail. What did they do? They sang hymns, didn't they? 
They praised the Lord. And then it, the, the, the jail shook. And, and then the chains were loosened and the door opened. Remember, the, and the jailer was going to commit suicide. You know, I mean, this was the first jailhouse rock. Yeah. This was before Elvis. But they did not resist the authority. Jesus didn't come. And they believed, that, and the Jews believed the Messiah was going to come and take them from the oppression of the Romans. You know, to take them and, and to fight their battles for them. He came to free them from sin. You know, to die on the cross. For the sin. Yeah. You know, he didn't come, you know, and they had everything confused. But, you know, so when we get so involved with politics and temporal things, we forget about the spiritual things. Jesus never fought against, you know, the government and stuff like that. I mean, when they charged him and everything, he spoke back and talked to them about it. But he was talking always about the kingdom of heaven. Not the earthly stuff that was going on. And he was, um, and so we are over politics while others are dying and going to hell for all eternity. But we're arguing about politics, you know, and, and what's happening and stuff like that. But we need to be out there witnessing. We need to be looking at the eternal things and not the temporal things. You know, yes, we need to speak out about abortion. Yes, we need to speak out about homosexuality. Anything that goes against God's word, we need to speak out about. It. You know, but not rile against it and cause a fight and everything else. You know, we need to show them in Scripture where what God says. But again, if they're not saved, they're not going to understand anything, are they? A lot of times we think they see through our eyes, and they don't. They're blinded. They're blinded. Satan has blinded them. And they are, you know, they don't see what we see. They don't see what Scripture says. They don't have the understanding that we have. Because we are born again. And we see what God sees. So we are called to be a kingdom of priests and not a kingdom of social activists. And so in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, what does it say? Or 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. Says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but who are now the people of God, who had not, uh, had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The Jews were looking for their Messiah to come and take them from that oppression. But he came to take and die for us. Jesus came and taught about the kingdom of heaven. Eternal things. Sin is the problem and it, is, and it eats away at everyone like a metastasized cancerous tumor. It eats away and eats away and eats away and eats away. You know? And there's so many unhappy people out there that they put their, 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 their joy in their car or put their joy in their house or put their joy in these material things that are going to be done away with. You know? You buy a car today, two years, you know, time to get it paid, that's when you start to put, uh, put it in the shop. Yeah. A lot of people just lease them for a couple of years and turn them back in and give it to somebody else's problem. Lease another one, you know? And so, uh, because when you lease something like that, you got all full warranty. But I don't know if it saves you money or not, but um, <clears throat> Christ came and took upon himself the sins of the world. Next point I got is the powers to be uh, are for our good. Alright? It all started with Moses. Next is 18, 13 through 26. I'm not going to uh, turn there because the time I know your stomachs are from. But Exodus 18, 13 through 26. I mean, Moses was trying. Uh, to to judge the you know, we got millions of people here, and people are coming to him with all these problems. Now just think of that. Just put yourself in Moses' sandals for a minute. Alright? And you all these people coming to you and one by one they're telling the you know and, or, or or they got caught in doing this, they did that and Moses was doing all the judging. And finally his father law says, Moses, 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 you're gonna rush your, you run yourself a frazzle here. 
You know, you've got to dedicate other, other people to handle these affairs, you know. And thus, the government kind of was born from that incident, you know, where, you know, Moses was the higher authority, like your Supreme Court say, and then you had little judges below that would judge the minor things. The big stuff only came to Moses, you know. So, um, and that helped out a great deal. And so, you know, in the United States, you just think if there was no rules or laws or anything, what do you think we'd have out here? Chaos. I mean, Germany is the only place I know where you can drink as much as you can and drive as fast as you can. I mean, the Autobahn, there's no speed limit there. I was always, I was always on the right side because I'm kind of an old slow <laughs> age. But I mean, people were going hundreds of miles an hour. Just think of those accidents. Cars flying in the air. And, um, but in the United States of America, we have three branches of government. Okay, let's, let's go here. How many know those branches? Legislators, um, judicial, and executive. Exactly. Who's on it? Okay, what, what is the executive? Who, who, who falls in the executive? Otis. Otis. <laughs> President Trump, yeah. he's in the executive. Then legislation is your Senate, right? Your Senate and your uh, Congress, then your judicial is your courts, your Supreme Court. And it goes like that for, for, for state government and stuff like that. But see how, but each branch does not have a single power. They don't have all the power, that's why they spread it up. Because it's checks and balances because of sin. If you give somebody complete power, they're going to run with it. Boy, will they run with it. Look what kings did. That's why he broke away from the kingdoms. Or uh, New England. Or New England. Right? There's no branch that has to have some power. And Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2, 13, 17, Therefore submit yourselves to every ordinances of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the kings as supreme or to governors as those who are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that is, by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for a vice, but as a bondservant of God, honor all people, love the, the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. For he is a minister of God. What does that mean? Deaconos. It's the same word used for deacon. It's a servant. So John and Katie are servants. You know, in the military, they're servants. He also works for the state, right? How do you get paid? Who pays you? We do, right? The taxes. The taxes. And so then it, um, um, the sword is an instrument of death. And where we see here where it says down in um, verse 4, to do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. Capital punishment. Alright? Because of evildoers. Yeah, but then again, there's checks and balances. The, the, so, uh, capital punishment is okay in certain cases. Um, um, and I also to wage war. You know, when, when we get a threat, if someone's going to come over and threaten to take us out, we have to protect ourselves, right? That's right. And so the government waged war just like when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. What did the president do? He waged war against Japan. Yeah. And what did Japan say? We have just woken up a sleeping giant. Yeah. And so... You know, and so we, it, it gives us right here, uh, it tells us, you know, the governments, you know, but it's again, all ordained by God. In Paul's day, they executed by decapitation. Paul, you know, because he was decapitized, you know, he, he, because he was a Roman citizen, okay, he could not be crucified, so they cut off his head, you know. But did he, you know, he went willingly. Because he was dying for his Lord. He didn't do anything wrong. But it was the way the government was. And But they also had crucifixion. Um, 
And so for uh, conscience sake, it, said, it, it is a Christian civic duty to obey the government, and it is their spiritual duty before God. And the last one I got here is the, the powers to be is honored. For this cause, pay ye tribute. And that means uh, in the last minute, there you go. In eight or in six and seven, for this cause ye pay tribute. Also, they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. We pay tribute. You know, we pay taxes to pay their salaries, to pay their wages. You know, to get our roads done, to get things done. You need money to do these things. So Matthew, uh, even Jesus spoke of it in Matthew 22, 19, 21. Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose image and description is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Uh, Jesus paid his taxes, Matthew 17, 24 and 27, when they came to Capernaum. Those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, What do you think, Simon? From what do you, uh, for whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, from strangers. Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in the hook, take the fish up. Then come up first, and when you have opened the mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Would you like that kind of fishing? <coughs> Throw a reel in, pull out a fish, and it has a hundred bucks on it? Okay. Yeah. But it shows also that Jesus was God. He put the money in the fish's mouth, and he went and fished and got the money. He was in if God is in control of everything. You know, but even Jesus paid the taxes. And we are to pay our taxes. Not to cheat. Not to try to get as much as we can. And there's a lot of people that do that. They kind of fudge. <coughs> you know, to, to, uh, they don't have to pay so much taxes and stuff like that. But guess what? You know, God watches you. You know, and Christians are not to lie on their taxes and return, uh, returns to get more money but they don't have to pay. Uh, for conscience sake, the Holy Spirit will convict us. Our conscience, conscience will eat at us if we do wrong. Uh, taxes help pay the uh, workers, like our government. We are to respect our leaders, law enforcement. We are to honor them with an utmost respect. And our military, you know, those who put their life on the line for us every day, you know, we thank them. And, and so we need to honor them and, and to show them our utmost respect, you know, and to pay our taxes, to pay their salary. You know, I think the military needs to get raises, don't you? Yes. You know, the National Guard needs to get raises. I mean, look what they go through. I mean, people think they just go over there and sit and play cards on the weekend. You know, at the weekend. No, oh, you're infantry. Let me tell you, you're out there digging a hole. Yes. I've dug so many holes. Nobody wanted because they got to be as tall as the tallest man in the armpit. Nobody wanted to come near me because we knew we were going to hit China. And uh, uh, but we dug foxholes and we 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 we, we uh, you know practiced and, and uh, drills and stuff like that. It was no picnic. Um, but God, in conclusion, God has ordained the government. This is what Paul is saying, even here in Rome and how the Romans were treating the Christians and stuff. God had ordained the government, but it's the sin that causes all the other chaos, you know. But God has ordained that if you do good and obey the law, you know, you'll do good. You know, and you'll have peace. By obeying them and honoring them, we obey and honor God. God has ordained them for our good. When we dishonor and disobey them, we dishonor and disobey God. Because he put them. And we're going to have to reap what we sow. And so... Um, we are to be a light into the world. And if we're doing what is right, then yes. the unbelievers can see and say, you know, I want what they have. Yes. You know, let me talk, let me ask them what, you know, they are so different from all of us. You know, let's, you know, and so we need to be that light shining that people can see 
that we are following the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, even the disciples had some hard times, you know, following and, and, and obeying. And uh, But Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. That's what we are to do. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we know that you instilled the government, but your power and you are higher than all the government. And there is authority, you know, in, 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 in government, in the home, uh, in churches, and, 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 and in the workplace, Lord. And because there's got to be checks and balances, and there is some because of the sinful nature that takes advantage of these things, but they do get disciplined and get caught. You know, and Lord, we just thank you so much for our government and our soldiers and military that protect us today and the National Guard. Lord, we love them all. We thank you so much for them and help us to be good model citizens, obeying the laws that you would instill, Lord, and here on earth, because we do have dual citizenship. Yes, our hearts want to be there in heaven with you, but while we're here on this earth, we must obey the civil laws. And, and follow the laws of the land that you have been put in place for our good. And Lord, we pray, Father, if someone here today that don't know you, that will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, Father, that they come up to the altar today. And Lord, if there's burdens that their people are carrying, if they're hurting, if they've got problems in the home or where at home, then they come to the altar and lay the burdens at the foot of the cross. And Lord, we also pray, Father, for those who are unsaved, Lord, that we come up and pray for our family and our loved ones that don't know you. Or even to come up and pray that how we can speak to them. Because how we know that if we even mention something about Christianity, they'll jump down our throat. But Lord, help us and show us an easier way or a way that we may approach certain people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we, we thank you again, Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord.